So why are muscle spindles important and what makes a muscle contract? That might be one of our, our next kind of question here. So the information begins up here in the brain. Okay? Motor activity occurs in the precentral gyrus, okay? the front part of our brains, areas 4, 4S, and 6, according to Broadman. And basically, that's just fancy ways for saying area 4 is right next to the, okay, the central sulcus. 6 is in front of that. S means suppressor. Okay, the suppressor band. That's important. That means when your brain wants to fire a muscle, it's got a check and balance system in there. So when I fire my bicep, it doesn't just go like this. It comes up nice and slowly. So the four S fibers are that descending inhibition. You know when people have a stroke and they present to your office, right, and they've got this flexor posture? They've lost that S. They don't have the suppressor band coming down anymore. That's why they're having issues. So the information starts up here. Okay, so sensory is in the front of the gyrus. Uh, um, sorry, motors in the front of the gyrus, sensory is just um, in the postcentral gyrus area. These are just some, some pyramidal cell neurons. The information is going to come, okay, from this area. We're talking about motor activity, so our motor cortex come down, okay, via what pathway? Well, for most of us, it's going to be the corticospinal pathway. It goes from the brain, the cortex, to the spine, and it comes down. It crosses over in the medulla. at something we call the decussation of the pyramids. It's like, where do they come up with that, you know? Basically, these areas, now if you were in early anatomy, so you have to understand, these guys like were dissecting bodies, they were exhuming them, you know, in the late hours and stuff like that, when people weren't going to be around, they were smelly and everything else like this. So these guys used to like do a lot of opium, right, to kind of like, you know, take the edge off and make things maybe a little clearer for them, right? So they looked at this part of the brain, so they're like, oh, these look like pyramids. It's like, oh, yeah, dude, they kind of do, you know? So that's how I got the name, <laughs> the decussation of the pyramids. So we cross there, and then we're going to come down the lateral funiculus of the spinal cord. So our spinal cord we're going to divide into a front, a back, and a side. The outside of the sides is spinocerebellar. Your motor stuff is just inside of that. The back is all dorsal column, and for our intensive purposes, the front is all vestibulospinal. Okay? So it's going to go down the lateral funiculus, with the leg stuff being on the outside, the arm stuff being on the inside, which is why when we have a compressive neuropathy or something pressing on the outside of the cord, our legs are affected first. Okay? In a cervical myelopathy, what's the first thing to go? Balance in the lower extremities. So you stand the person on one leg, you have them close their eyes, and they start going, whoa, whoa. What are you thinking right away? Atlas subluxation. Well, maybe. Or it could be that they've got a little bit of stenosis going on and they're crunching on their corticospinal tract a little bit. So you go down and you whack a reflex and you say, wow, he's got really good reflexes on that side. The other side's, you know, not so good. Well, maybe he's got a little cord pressure on that area and he's got a myelopathy. This is a guy you definitely want to stick needles in and stay away from whacking his neck, okay? All right, so the information's going to come down there, go through here, okay, and down here travels through this thing called the internal capsule. This is a beautiful picture of the brainstem one of my favorite structures, and ends up down through the peripheral nerve going to the individual muscle fiber, okay, and this one is showing actually a muscle spindle. And I've got some annular spiral endings, I've got some flower spray endings in that area, and muscle spindles are sort of the volume controls on our muscles.